1427 Phillips Street looks like any other Missoula residential home on the west side. It belongs to a young couple with two adorable children. What I didn't know for nearly all of the 19 years I've lived on that block, and what many of you may not know either, is that my neighbor's house was once the site of St. Paul African Methodist Episcopal Church, active from 1910 until the late 1930s. At that address, a congregation of the first generation of fully emancipated black Americans held regular Sunday services. But the church was much more than that. It was the social center and the foundation of support for the town's small but burgeoning black population. Montana historian Anthony Wood observed that the few towns in Montana that maintained an active black population in the early 20th century were able to develop local black businesses, fraternal organizations, civic groups, and women's groups as a result of having a church to support them. In every one of the aforementioned categories, he wrote, the local church was not only a factor of their success, but vital to their very existence. Twice in its existence, the church's Sunday services were interrupted by members of the University City Chapter Number 16 of the Knights of the Ku Klux Klan, Missoula's local KKK chapter. By the end of the Great Depression in World War II, the church was gone, and Missoula's black population, already very low, plummeted even further. The racial composition of any American city is a product of its history. This may seem painfully obvious, but it's something that we need to say out loud and type in bold letters to fully appreciate. Hi, everyone. We're here with the person who you just saw doing a public comment earlier this month. But of course, this, this is the end of February, which also marks the end of Black History Month. And one of the things that uh, kind of, you know, you produced this story back in November, yeah. but then you spoke upon it on um, February, yeah. which is, of course, I talked about on my show as well. But I'm really glad that you're here Thanks. to Thanks uh, talk me. a little bit more about yeah. uh, Black History Absolutely. in uh, the city of Missoula. Yeah. So uh, this is all about the church right. that was made back in 1910. Yeah. Well, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, what other uh, details uh, can you mention about, uh, you know, about this as well? Well, I, yeah, like I said, um, 1910, it was formally established. They sold the, the old Lowell School building was sold um, to the African Methodist Episcopal Church. Um, and they started having regular services uh, pretty much right there. And the 5th District uh, AME had, was a, a collection of black churches in no the Pacific Northwest. So they had a, an organization and they had revolving door sort of ministers that would be going to different churches over that time. Um, so, yeah, it, 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 they, it was, you know, Missoula had about, at that time, 0.5% of the population was black. Um, and um, it was really a, a main way for black people to maintain a consistent presence in an overwhelmingly white environment. Um, those churches were very uh, essential to uh, any continuity for, for black people uh, moving west. And, you know, that was, could be found in, in any town in, in Montana where there were black churches. They were able to keep a foothold and, and stay um, in town. They had, the church was sort of an organizing center for them. Yep. And the, the craziest thing, too, like it, that you mentioned, is that the local chapter here of Missoula, the Ku Klux Klan, right. and that they came and donated money right. to the church, but not because they wanted to support them, because it was a power play. Well, it, it's, it's hard to interpret it, and it's, it's probably a lot of different things. It's very hard to make sense of it. But you know, I, I was looking at the newspaper archives um, at that time. The Klan was becoming was na nationwide. I mean, there was chapters all over. There was one in Missoula. There was one in Bozeman and uh, uh, Kalispell. And um, the, one of the things they were doing regularly was going into black churches and giving AME churches uh, in particular, giving them a donation. Um, and, you know, I talked to Professor Tobin Miller Shear at the university, and one of the things about the AME church is it was, it was not a directly confrontational church. Um, they were more on building sort of uh, in the sort of Booker T. Washington vein of building up respectability within the black community. And sort of, uh, they were, so in a sense, they weren't threatening, and, and the population size, of course, wasn't. So in that way, I think the Klan was like... Uh, Honor, or not honoring them, but recognizing their efforts at sort of staying in their place and, and not challenging their uh, status in the community. And that was one way of like, you know, showing, looking charitable. They always wanted to appear like they were the white knights, you know, 
um, with those hoods <laughs> right. and insignia. And, and that was a way for them to feel probably like they were, that they, they were friendly to black people as long as black people stayed in their place. Right. Yeah. So that I means that's like very just kind of like, um, you know, a lot of times dealing with persecution from a lot of their hometowns, especially down south. Um, even like there's just so much like history in regards to this like just recently they came out that new movie the green book yeah. which you know the green you know the, the movie's very just like very movie very very hollywood yeah. but then the actual book itself is basically yeah. right. a guide right. to the south over like avoid this town right. do all yep. that stuff yep. and you know missoula you know everyone thinks that oh yeah missoula such a cool town you like everyone's chill everyone's right. okay with everything right. but then there's always that really like um, like in the back of a lot of people's minds in Missoula, which are like not in my backyard. There's a very strong not in my uh, backyard. Well, yeah, yeah, <laughs> there, there, there is, and and it, you know, um, well, it, it's it's always hard to say what Missoula would be like if we had more black people here now, but in, you can look in larger cities that you consider very liberal, like New York City, and it has some of the most segregated schools and the most segregated neighborhoods. Um, you know, the, it's built into the fabric <laughs> of this country, really, the, that, that white people worked very hard to keep black people from living among them. Um, I don't know if that's your question, <laughs> but... Uh, that, that answers a lot of... That, um, that, that's, not, that's why it's not a unique thing about Missoula. I mean, it, it, this, I looked into Missoula because that's where I live, but it can be found anywhere. I think any town history, you can find elements of this, because when you look at the newspapers, you just see how sort of second nature it was to believe that that there was something biologically inferior about black people. I mean it was a it was actually just a rationale for our pre existing hatreds, I think. But um, you know, with the Darwinian evolutionary theories became very popular then a lot of just bogus science. A lot being, of people right. just kinda tacked so on they would, the science that they know with science that yeah. makes no sense. Right. And then, it's like just because it's this way and this way, therefore it can be transitioned into this yep. subgroup and blah blah blah. Yeah, yeah. And there was a lot of um, like really bogus uh, social science going on information that, that was emphasizing that, that black people had in, innate criminality. Um, and that's why, like you saw, um, in one part of the fundraising efforts, uh, the mayor pointed out how the church had reduced black crime. Um, by 75%, he wanted to make a, a big point because he was sort of playing to the, the prejudices that people would have about a black presence in town being a criminal element in town. And um, they, you know, they were, you know, it was a, sort of a self-serving thing to say, well, we're, we're going to support the church because they're going to bring down black crime because, you know, they'll help mitigate this sort of innate quality in black people, which is just, you know, very revealing, but it's sort of hidden in a way that you have to kind of know the greater history to see what you know what what's going on in the specific situation. which brings which brings us back to the title of your uh, article that you uh, published um, and it was basically hiding in plain sight right absolutely yeah and it was uh, as That's as the plain the sight as it was yeah. which is right next door to yep. where you live absolutely yep it was right next door to my house the church was and i didn't know that at the time in fact i hadn't really been looking into the church specifically i was just looking into the Missoula's black population and trying to find trends over the census data and to see you know in 1940 there was a big a fairly big drop off and so i was trying to figure out well where were people living then? You know, and I was just going through the manuscript census, and that's when I came across the came across the block that I live on, and uh, there was a retired minister, 1427. It's a pastor, so hmm. and I'd heard that there was a black church, but I I hadn't looked into it closely enough. And then I looked at the, the Sanborn maps. These are these old fire insurance maps that show sort of property information at various times in history. And I looked at it for you know uh, I think it was 1912 somewhere in there. And there it was, St. Paul AME Church, right next door to where I live now. And it's like, the, you know, we, we knew it had been the former Lowell School building. I didn't know it had been a black church and that it had such a, a, an amazing history, really, for three decades. So I've been noticing that, uh, I mean, of course, I liked your uh, page, uh, Black History of Monta oh, yeah, in Montana. Oh, yeah, Black History in Montana? Yeah, Black History in Montana. Yeah, because you said you had a little trouble with finding the name. Well, I... <laughs> I started it up. I wasn't sure what I was going to do with it. I, I knew I, would, I thought, well, maybe this would be some other way to sort of get the word out. And so I sort of began setting it up and uh, just had to put a name in. And so it sort of I had it as Montana's Black History. And then I like I wanted to change it to more something like, you know, it's it can be found anywhere you look or, you know, uh, history that's right in front of you, something like that. Right. Um, and it was too much of a change. 
Um, so, and I, but I also thought that Montana's black history sounded a little too authoritative. I'm not a historian, I'm not an expert, I'm a journalist, but I'm not a, I'm certainly not an expert, and I, so, why, so I just put black history in Montana to make it a little less nice. yeah, authoritative. Sound. And of course, you can find more information on, um, on these stories as well. You have your, uh, your website where people can find this as it's well? It's on the, yeah, the, the article that I wrote uh, is on the Medium website and it's called Hiding in Plain Sight, <clears throat> sorry, Hiding in Plain Sight, St. Saint pa Saint Paul AME and uh, the Forgotten History of, Missoula's Forgotten Black History. <laughs> I think I'd remember my own title, but <laughs> something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And you can find it, you know, I, I Googled it. I just, uh, from what I did, I just Googled Black Church Missoula. Yeah. And it kind of popped up it right It came there. right up. Oh, mm -hmm. good. So yeah. it's really easy to find. It's a great article. You should totally check it out. And the one thing that I really did notice is that you are getting a lot of coverage. A couple of news media kind of yeah. reached out to you or you're yeah. able to uh, tell your story. Yeah. So what, uh, like, I know that you uh, want to um, find out more information because the kind of the stories kind of really picked up some traction for sure. A little so bit. So you're looking to find more information. Yeah, yeah. I, I def well, I certainly would hope that anyone <laughs> who watches or anyone who knows more about this uh, older history of the church would love to hear from them. Um, definitely, I, we can't find pictures of it. There is no. There, there really aren't any visual records of the church apart from descriptions in the newspaper. They had uh, an annual barbecue for several years in Green Oak Park, Southern Barbecue, that brought out, you know, the first one was a, five, the paper said 500 people um, came to this thing. And I'm like, that seems large enough that, that there had been some pictures or some documentation of that. And I can't find any. I think it's important, because um, it's, it's, it's important for us to know that, you know, this is a time of a lot of population <coughs> changes, uh, you know, the westward expansion, and black people, if things had gone differently, they had a chance, and they probably would have lived here in larger numbers. Um, and so I think we need to look into that history a lot more and try to figure out why, you know, why is Missoula so white? Why is Montana so white? All right. So once again, you can go online. Uh, you can look up um, the AME. Uh, yeah, St. Paul AME. Church. Yeah, hidden in, hiding in plain sight. Mm -hmm. St. Paul AME Church. Awesome. And Missoula's forgotten black history. Okay. Well, is there anything else you want to mention? Any... Uh, no, I just uh, I'm currently do, doing looking into uh, a specific uh, black resident that lived here for a long time, uh, McNorton uh, Chester McNorton. He had a brother, William McNorton, who uh, was one of the first. It's very famous in Sanders County. They call him something which I won't say on, right? Which is terrible. But he there's only, a lot. There was a yeah. lot of articles that you post on there, yeah. and it was ridiculous. And oh, it's like yeah. you, you can. You can teach blah, 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 yeah. this, but you can't raise them up to be a certain blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah, right. all this stuff. Oh, yeah, Ben like Tillman's. Yeah, yeah, the guy, the congressman who came through Montana, yeah. went he to the was, Union Hall and just... Right, and, and it just sounded like everybody loved his speech, and he, he just was wickedly racist. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, all that is all in this story. There's a lot more to this story. Yeah, yeah, there was, it took, yeah, it was a lot. It's a 24-minute read, they say, so wow. it's a long... All right. Well, thanks, Greg. Yeah, I really thank you for it. having me. So this is Greg Martin. Um, look up more information uh, about this um, as it evolves yeah. on uh, black history in Montana. Yeah. Awesome.